flat earth british martin speaking welcome people welcome to my channel and what is a flatter day okay so i've come in for a visit this will be a flatter day shocker okay a flatter day shocker for you all uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to put another puzzle piece into that puzzle of reality <laughs> okay and try and make more sense of it all this will resonate with a lot of you let me know in comments what you think now what has happened is another lee flat earth british epiphany moment okay with combination of what all the great flat earth british think tank peeps put together with their sharing and their ideas okay okay now that's what we're going to be looking at we're going to be thinking about on the cusp of the release of flat earth british bookage okay our plain earth the holy grail will be released um very shortly coming out soon and we're one week today away from the flat earthers convention okay in kidderminster england with yours truly will be presenting and there's my sort of presentation of by there I could collect a few more images that will be for next weekend so hope hope to meet you all there no loads of you are going to come and meet me um and um have a hug or in my case because i'm a welsh hmm? Kutch. Okay. Okay. Peace and love. Plenty of love to go around. Don't worry. We're going to have such, such fun. Make sure to come. Okay. Come in droves. <laughs> and we'll have some fun. Okay. Now let's see how this goes. Now Lee, flat of British subscriber. If you don't know, he drives a van. Okay. Apparently, van driving is very therapeutic to mental processes, as in having epiphany moments. Now, Something that everybody is noticing, the deeper we go down this rabbit hole and the more truth that we expose, these things are getting awfully strange. But what that is, guys, is that's because their magic is dissolving and the more we expose, the more their magic will disappear. It'll be a whole new day. This is how it's going to work. This is how consciousness works. Okay, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep busting their balls till they go. Okay, we don't want to play anymore. We're not doing your your stage show. And when the show's over, the thing you keep doing, we're not playing. Okay? <laughs> give a fuck. Peace and love to you lot, guys. You a lot are absolutely epic. Now, um, basically, I've got a little bit snowed and I've been working, as I said, all week. Um, beekeeping, on the book, vlogs, trying to catch up. But if you are waiting for an email back from me, please be patient. I do get there in the end okay just need to devote a few hours to it all when i get them <laughs> so flat day happy flat day buckle in okay buckle in mean it. Mean it. if you're new to my channel okay you're gonna be very confused right now okay but you're gonna need to watch back maybe 500 videos you'll catch up then <laughs> not really i'll do a synopsis along the way so phew, lots to talk about won't be all day we're going to start here with lightning, lightning, lightning. And we're going to talk about aspects of this. Now, this was, um, according to Lee, um, something that Jens said, but most of us probably know by now that lightning doesn't happen from the sky down, but actually starts from the ground and it acts and it connects. Okay, so you can actually catch this on camera. You see it like a shadow, and then it happens in you know split seconds, milliseconds. The whole thing lights up. But it starts in the ground. The electric is coming up from the ground. Okay, now let's have a think about elements of technasmia. If you don't know about technasmia, this is science in this golden age just gone by um, of collecting electrostatic charge out of the ether. Um, there was more electric stat static charge available during comets because they agitated the EM. There was more electrostatic charge following mud floods because of the nature of the ground, damp, um, you know, gloopy, uh, with the salt contents. This thing has dielectric properties anyway, so it had an increase. And the land covered in water, water is electric, uh, it's all dielectric or is torus fields we'll talk about that along the way so what they're doing is in this era this is from a cursed book okay 
from you know 1600s and they're telling you about it here where they collect electrostatic and other properties maybe of the ether now what we've been discussing maybe for two years now between myself and lee okay is were they extracting anything from the ground An electrostatic charge um some kind of power out of the ground because these things are put on water courses on straight lines like ley lines all of these churches are lined up on maps there's a lot of thought put into their building and they put on other nodal points if you like of other civilizations you can see different aspects of technasmia through history um where they can show you you know these these people in this in this period are literally shooting at this resonator which is catching electrostatic charge also over here They're maybe trying to take it out trying to stop it but the attack is on the day you is on is on the electricity which they thought to be god in this period electricity what is it define it go on define it outside of their official explanation define electricity to them it's white it's pure it's power it can kill you stone dead or it can bring you back to life it's everything we we people you know we have our blood is plasma plasma like the sun plasma and we have water and we are mostly made of water and just so happens that that is salt water just like the sea the electric properties us but we are Taurus fields the same as everything now okay now what we're going to think about now is in a previous reset uh, the one before last, maybe the one they call Greco Romano, the later than this. You can see there it is, all like nice and tiled, there it is in a mud flood. Okay. There were more people. This place was infinitely bigger. Um, there's more in your, in your with us that they don't tell us about, and this place was more populated. Okay. Now, they compressed everybody in cities, but the countryside is just empty so there's more space for more people lots more space for more people <laughs> they all got killed in the reset so where are all the people we've often thought about well we summarized did they burn them did they cremate them did they spread them in the sea and that's what's given the sea saline properties um and then we juggled with the idea of you know just eating <laughs> They were mud flooded, so they're deep down underneath us. The bones of the recent victims are underneath layers of mud. Who knows down, how far down? Mile, two, who knows? Layer upon layer upon layer of reset dead and their bones. Okay? Below our feet. And the water below our feet. And above. What was above? was below bones or human bones have dielectric properties they're piezoelectric forces okay there's um it can be registered and if bones are put together the register the, it can be increased um, if bones are damp their conductive properties increase it is quite slight but they have got electric dielectric forces so bones bones human bones carry a charge quite a bit of it as well apparently well you know it's 10 kilohertz there um, which can be increased when it's damp I'm not going to read all of this out I just want to give you the the information that human bones are dielectric um, not amazingly conductive when dry um, but they do that small amount but when wet and when put together things change human bones consist chiefly of calcium phosphate is which a form of salt which dissolves poorly um, in a solid state inside the body so obviously the salt as well so the electrical and dielectric properties of the human bone 
okay piezo electricity can turn bones into batteries now is the film the matrix is the film matrix telling humanity that they're batteries because they're actually that's what's going on but not in the sense you think of but only excuse me sorry about that when we're dead after reset electricity is all around us it's in wires it's in our walls it's in the atmosphere it's in our phones our cars and these days our books and it's also hiding in very unexpected places our bones it's called piezoelectricity which translates to electricity by pressing or squeezing now the brothers paul jacques and pierre curry um, first coined the term uh, to describe the electricity when they saw it compressed quartz or turmoil crystals basically piezoelectricity is a way of converting mechanical electric into electricity sorry about that I didn't turn my uh, notifications off pressure disrupts the balance of the object's electric electrical charges one side of the crystal takes a positive charge and the other side becomes negative which makes it a sort of microscopic battery. Wait for it, guys. Wait for it. Um, this doesn't work on everything. Stop squeezing your cap, please. <laughs> Only certain crystals. Okay. Now, you know a piezoelectric crystal. If you have a clicky lighter, there's one in there. That's what makes that little... You put a thumb on it and it hurts. That's the piezoelectric crystal. Um, arcing. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Um, you'd be surprised to know how many things those crystals make up and how useful they can be. Piezoelectricity is a force that allows recognition software to turn sound waves into signals for computer uh, for your computer to use. It was the reason quartz watches are accurate and the force that transforms the grooves on your vinyl LP into music that you can hear. We can thank piezoelectricity for cigarette lighters, uh, microphones, gas grills, ultrasonic technology, and potato guns. Yes, I love them. Uh, <laughs> its effects don't stop with appliances. Piezoelectricity can be found in all kinds of organic materials, from silk and wood to arteries, tendons, and bone. Okay. Yes, you can have crystals in your bones. Our skeletons are made of both hard and soft tissues. The rigid parts that hold up are comprised of crystals, calcium phosphate, also known as bone salt. Yeah, I know. Japanese scientists were first, were the first found evidence of piezoelectricity in human bones in the late 50s. And nearly six decades since, their experiments have been replicated and the results are validated. The bones definitely can hold a charge that works to our advantage. Okay. Uh, as it turns out, bones respond pretty well to a little jolt of electricity. Electrical stimulation encourages bone growth to heal. And in fact, that's now being exploited by orthopedic surgeons. Our bones are living, changing objects endowed with the elect body electric and their odd little spark. Now going on that, so imagine billions of people layered, billions of people layered, billions of people layered below our feet, creating all our charge. Now think of the missing dead that are in catacombs, which we talked about two weeks ago, thanks to Captain Kirk, again, who pieces this together with all of us. Now, this was noticed by Lee because he got eyes like a shithouse rat. It's this. There's 18.5 million people under this catacombs in Paris's citadel underneath essentially I suppose Notre Dame Cathedral and all that citadel uh, many caverns are, or tunnels haven't been excavated but they say there's up to 20 odd million in there this is what he noticed this is what he noticed these bones apart from they're going to be wet or damp at least they're blackened they're blackened now what else he noticed is they are all tightly packed together and they've had a lot of thought put into it 
I mean they're compressed together so that they're all touching with a lot of thought put into it guys but the blackening so if just if these bones 18.5 million of them are these Okay, which they just told you is very very possible then there's a huge amount of electricity being generated below our feet and all of our water and above our heads okay all that static electrostatic charge all of that water vapor that is in the air even on a really dry day it's still there that vapor water vapor is there everything is torus by nature this is doable are they creating huge human bone banks to create a charge let's have a look at that again now they're blackened because the battery has been run dry and now not being used but what about this electric cable is this a bit of metal it's not bone is it so it's going from this side and it's going from this side yeah what about this here well it looks like a wire doesn't it and it's going from this side to this side so completing a charge yeah hmm. is this what they're doing with the dead they're making infinite amounts of power hmm we are batteries when we're dead and slaves when we're alive we have a, a lesser life than the drone worker bee everyone working for the worker bee now to complete the circuit all buildings today are built temporary so that when the reset comes nothing will be left behind for the next civilization that comes in to pick apart and reverse engineer the way we have they're going to find the pyramids they're going to find these other places Angkor Wat etc Puma Punko who knows higher places they will find there's enough people to survive and they will pick it apart it will take longer the controllers they've got it down to a T their new towers of Babylon there they are they're built of glass and metal all every one of them of conductive and like you know there are conductive properties in piezoelectric properties in some sorts of quartz stone that is definitely the case but in these cases they're all conductive and if lightning hits one which they want to attract it will hit a lightning rod and it will come down the side of the building I fitted these things myself a copper strip all the way to an earthing port on the floor where according to them the electricity will run away and seep away into the earth and it is gone what if it's completing the cycle you have the bones and bones and bones underneath creating a charge the lightning comes out of the ground not out of the air something's arcing also with the technasmia devices you know they're attracting this you know this spark could it be because of the forces from below that's attracting and having to complete the circuit hitting yeah hitting the technasmia device okay hitting the technasmia device and so completing the circuit from what's coming below yeah this is this is the case because it's all dielectric by nature so completing the circuit okay so to just summarize what I just said the uh, bones human bones the dead have gone somewhere they are under our feet standing on the shoulders of giants literally because the giants could be down there but I can't verify their piezoelectricity forces in their bones because I don't know anything of their structure but we'll go on humans or whatever people or whatever have gone before us the bones piezoelectric forces they could definitely be batteries and stacked together in the millions underneath a city would, cre would create huge amounts of electrical charge so could it be utilized for humanity yes or the people that are above yes and the whole circuit of attracting technosmia okay is drawn from the power 
after you go below, we've got to complete a circuit. Okay? So it's coming from below. From them bones, them bones, them electrified bones. And when the comets do go over as well, this is another thing it causes for the death of millions, is a lateral static phenomena in the atmosphere causing epidemics. General statement in facts tending to prove the atmospherical causes for epidemics, mass plant die-offs, mass humanities, they talk about miasma, and a variety of headaches in connection with atmospheric elect atmospherical electricity. So you can get headaches with atmospheric electricity as well, with a lot of it. And it goes into a lot of details about what happens in these times. So the atmosphere will determine your health, how it's changing. Atmospherical air. Animal life, plant life, it goes into it all. So I'm going to link that up, just extra thoughts. I'm not going to go too much into it, we're going to move on. Now this was a couple of weeks ago. We're thinking about where all this power that they were creating and how it could have been utilised in this golden era of, t of Tataria. Okay. This was a few weeks ago, maybe a month back now, when I was in Nottingham with Mel and we were taking photographs, right? And a couple of days ago, we were looking at a church and noticed, like, do you know them portals in the sides? I was like, yeah. She's like, do you think something plugged into them? Because it don't have to look like a plug. I was like, Yeah, they really do look like plugs. So, this one's had the stone taken out, but you can see some of them, they got like just the four holes, but they block every one of these technasmia ports up. Okay, so let's have a little fruit, fl flick through so we can see any technasmia ports. There's one there, that's the same one. There's one in that building. Could they have been for some sort of balloons, electric balloons, aerial transport? They're on all of these Tartarian structures. If I can find a few of these portals. Excuse me. Well, I can bring them up anyway on churches at the end. But you'll see these portals absolutely everywhere. I'm sure you know of them. Just bring that down. Excuse me. Uh, let's have a look at Cardiff. Maybe that'll show me some portals. This is my city. Uh, oh yeah, I was here two nights ago, I'm going to uh, show you that in a minute, it's Land of Cathedral, Madrid, okay, let's have a look here, Amiens, London, Washington, United States, give me some portals, give me some portals, there, okay, Detroit is the lucky contender. Apparently that's been bought by Ford, the general station, so I've been told by a Detroitian. Is that what you call when you're from Detroit? So even these tiny buildings will get these technasmia ports. Do they just... Yeah, see, yeah. Um, just for the emittance of um, organ sound and technasmia sound. Some of them are perfectly round, like these. Almost as if something could fly in, in the side, in the apex, they're better, and just plug in. And fly off again, like aeroplanes do when they're refueling. The roads are broader than they should be for, excuse me, for um, horse and carriage. There's definitely another mode of transport going on. Bear in mind, nothing new under the sun. And it could have been refueling these. Maybe they just plugged in on the buildings with one of the cable charged, charged up with free technasmia. These portals are on every building, look. This is New York City, thanks Heidi. And you'll see them on just bog standard buildings. Have we got any on there? Uh, well no, it's all been blocked up because ever's on that mm, Phoenician bloody building. Mm, nice bit of raw iron on there. Uh, looks copper. So, excuse me. Um, anyway. So you get the drift anyway, so technasmia holes are portals, which I have got many pictures of actually, just, just being weird. <coughs> okay, things, <laughs> castles, places, there you are, I got hundreds, 
So let's have a look at the cathedrals. Which I visited one only two days ago. And there it is. Flander Cathedral. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So organ music going through techno as me a whole. Could something plug in? Could that what could that be what's happening? See what I mean? They're all on everything. These poles, these portals. All right, they could be for emitting technasmia, but they're on every building, and they're the same. They're like three ports, like a plug hole. Oh, that's fake, apparently. Um, again, portals, portals, emitting sound, yeah, but they could be utilised for that. Harmonic resonance devices. It's all about the portal windows and it's all about the massive cymatic windows. These three you get in this shape look exactly like a plug. Like it should just plug into something. So anyway, electricity, they're making millions of electricity, Martin. What are they doing with it all? Well, uh, as I said, guys, nothing new is under the sun, okay? They had high-speed trains in 1893. That are like the bullet train in Japan. Okay. Now, if you're going to be looking into the official narrative for, for training, you've got to start here, okay, which is Stevenson's rocket. Okay. So if you believe this, and the next bit where I'm going to show you, you're going to have to start scratching your head and wondering how they came on so quick. So they built the Manchester to Liverpool railway. It's the first in the world, you know. It was going to run along like the Manchester Shipping Canal, etc., etc. And they have like a test for trains to go along it. And Stevenson wins with his, you know, the other one blew up. You know, it was the first train in history. Okay, so Liverpool to Manchester Railway. 1829 trains of this piece of shit. Sure, they evolved a little bit better over the next five years or so. So, in the official narrative, in 1829, the first railway train is Stevenson's Rocket on the Manchester to Liverpool Railway. The first of its type in reality. Yet, yet only... Ooh, 50 years later, they have electric high-speed trains. Okay, so... So they went from Stevenson's Rocket to that in 50 years. Anyway, so what are they doing with Volley Electric? Well, they're probably planes, trains, automobiles, and street lighting. Same as today, but, you know, free. <laughs> so in 1893, 100 mile an hour speed electric train. So is this from stolen history? I don't usually look at that stuff, because it steals history. This is definitely not something I've ever heard of before. But it's about a hundred mile an hour train in 1893. It's very interesting. It sounds like I actually started implementing the project by grading 24 miles of proposed real estate. Logically, um, the fact that it was supposed to mean that they didn't have the solution to the design of the above locomotive. So was it used? Was it not? Okay. Yeah. First recorded hundred mile an hour speed train was in 1834. So it's just hypothesizing. Okay. Work on the railway commenced on October the 6th at Edinburgh. 24 miles of graded line was weather permitted. And they have depictions of it here. And it's supposed to be in a mud flooded world, by the way, with big Italian buildings. High speed train. There it is again. In another depiction. In Chicago, St. Louis Electric Railroad brochure. So they had like a bullet electric train in Chicago. The size of these buildings just don't know where. Fields. But they require an electric train to go up down one street. Just one street. Until the rest is dug out, probably. Anyway, so yeah. So in 1892, they had high speed train in Chicago. And. Only 50 years after Stevenson's rocket, they got something like this. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> tiny, that is, then, guys. Yep, it's a tiny little train. 
So, proof of thought, that's what they might have been doing with electricity, high-speed electric trains. They did exist in the 1890s, by all accounts. Stevenson's rocket is bullshit. You can't come that advanced in 50 years. That's as nutty as everything else in this reality that they tell us about. It makes no sense whatsoever. Next, we're going to look at another little mind-blower. If you watch the series The Greatest Secret Never Told um, concerning beaver dams or the beaver make of dams, we studied um, Amsterdam and the Phoenicians' mastery of water with this place. Damming it, getting the mud off the, the water off the land after the events, okay, is what we studied on The Greatest Secret Never Told. Now, what we discovered was the map of early Amsterdam was the shape of a beaver's head. Check this out. New York when it was still Amsterdam, or little new Amsterdam, okay? So here's how Amsterdam looked, uh, turned into New York overnight. New Amsterdam was renamed New York in 1664 in honor of the Duke of York. Um, um, in those names, the English had captured it, blah, 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 that's the official narrative anyway, bullshit. So there it is, okay, now check this out, guys. So they put a star fort where Battery Park is, roundabouts there in Manhattan Island. So it's like, you know the story, the official story, Manhattan's there, the Indian, man with hot on, and New Amsterdam, 1660, okay, but check the buildings already. Now this is the map of New Amsterdam 1660 and as you can see they made it into a beaver's head. Here's the eye, that's the star fort, the nose, even the teeth. Okay, now here's a gobsmacker. New York is exactly the same. They have a, a star fort where the eye is, tough, even the river or it's facing a little bit of a different way. So, the eye, the nose, and that little jetty for the turf. So it's the eye, the nose, and that little jetty for the turf. Next one down from the jetty is a canal that gives you like a sort of mouth thing. Next one down from the jetty is a canal. So to be exact, the beaver head map of Amsterdam from 1660 is identical to the map of New York of the same period or 1670, 16, excuse me, let's just puff that up a bit if actually I can't actually see that, excuse me, uh, 1653, so it's a little bit earlier than that, so, the Venetian mastery of the water, look at this wall here, the city wall, the whole of New York is a type of star fort all the way up to the Bowery. Oh, there it is. Excuse me. As Dick Storm knew it in 1662, huge star fort and the shape of a beaver's head. See the star fort here? Uh, some sort of communication tower by the look of it. You see that, guys? Let's have a look at that. Sorry. Hmm. Oh, it disappeared. I was going to. It's a flagpole, but why all the knobbly bits? Mm. Well, anyway, that's New York City. Um, in 1673. And it's star-forded. And it's the shape of a beaver's head. Who knew? So we've got the French with a W. I won't be doing them anymore. Two Vs. Like that shit. Um, and the British. Phoenicians. The Dutch surrender New Amsterdam. Some dude with one leg. Okay, bit of history. Fancy that though, Amsterdam being exactly the same beaver head. Now we're going to move on because this is only going to be an hour long vlog. Okay, it's not going to be a tremendously long vlog because uh, I need to get on. Now, this is concerning my book, guys. I don't know if it's going to be out in time for the convention next week. I'm going you know, a lot of work with, you know, the legality of the images required to go in the book. And you've got to get them exact, because in this book's case, you know, an image is worth a thousand words. So, trying to find, you know, good ones. 
um, it's taken a lot of time a lot of time so I'm still in the process of doing that but everything else you know just tying up loose ends this will be ready so I want to thank everyone who's pre-ordered this it's been quite a few keep them coming you'll be able to take free uh, pre-orders all the way now and it'll be out now in the next few weeks or so okay a couple of weeks who knows soon soon um, and it's a mind blower it's called our flat earth the holy grail okay and there it is so make sure to uh, order your book today and you can learn everything about this subject this is indeed mind-blowing I'll give you these links and they'll tell you all about me um, I'm an author, speaker, educator, alternative historian, flat earth, spiritual, political and educational yeah. I'm that and uh, a couple of other things so hey not that you just I meant beekeeper somebody swore then Flat Earth British Live will be at Kidderminster next Saturday, a week today. Quite looking forward to that, catching up with all the Flat Earth peeps. Reminding them all that the Flat Earth book is on the horizon. Because um, I have been on a live event this week, two nights ago, or three nights ago. I was on Ranty Effie, my mate Ranty Effie. Big shout to him. I'll, I'll link him. Up. Thanks very much, Ranty. Um, Ranty um, allowed me to talk about my Flat Earth book. Um, only one other channel has done that, that would be Robin, the organiser for this glorious affair, who's um, lifting the lids. I want to thank those guys very, very much for helping me talk about my, our Flat Earth British book. So yeah, that's happening, that's on the horizon next week, if you want to catch up, you've seen Cleo Mortimer Golf Club, blah, 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 there's parties, you can meet D-Marble, which would be epic, um, and the Globe Light Tour, so it's Jason, Roxanne. Now I'm going to go to the Globe, Ty Globe Light Tour Thursday, or Wednesday, Wednesday this week, because they're in Cardiff land, unless the hurricane hits. Don't know what will happen. So there you are. Sunday, Dave Murphy, Max Sergeant, Dave Marsh, um, and I am on at six, 4 till 6. Two hours, there's plenty of time to do what I need to do. So I'll be happy, guys. Looking forward to that. Pictures. Somebody has joined the think tank, has been putting some glorious pictures on. Let's have a little look before I go few, through a few of mine. So we'll be keeping you, as I said. Today, the flat day. Right, well, I do want to summarise what we may have learned. That is a curious building. Hmm. What's that made of? Stone. Hmm. Was a tower with the roof put on later and a load of energy gatherers for the age of free energy which they took from us so they could bill us forever and keep us enslaved and there's one of those Phoenician whales or their whalers giving it what for but they're not whalers that's strange meat Phoenicians again they come up and that whale spit him out like Jonah and then uh, they're very muscular aren't they but they got like growths as well like they all look like that Phoenicians hmm very sinister indeed so yeah something new joined I can't think of, oh, his name will come up now he's got some really funky stuff so George and Dragon, some gods doing alchemy. Now, um, a couple of days ago, Mel visited, and we were, she'd got this book, and I, I just love for her to read it. Um, it's the mythos of Greek mythology, and while you're reading it, you just know this is what is really going down. It talks about Prometheus, it talks about the Golden Age, it talks about the events, how this, the Phoenicians, right the way through. But they don't regard them as the Phoenicians, but it's the Greeks. But anyway, guys. They talk about the titans, they talk about the, the fact that he could be below our feet and walking on them, etc. You know, the, you know, walking on the shoulders of giants. Exactly that. And they said that most of the titans are sort of on lockdown and don't have any interaction with humanity for the time being until the end time. Um, until the, you know, the, the last year, or the great year. 
Uh, but they said that the good news is, the good news is, and it is good news, so I'm happy to share it, is um, the, there's a woman, or a female, not woman, because that means a man with a woman. That's them Phoenicians again. A man with a womb. It's a man with a womb. Not a man. So, um, that's not good. So, um, there's a female, uh, one of these gods, called Hope. And she's still looking out for us, apparently. She still has her, her hand helping humanity. So, apparently, the good news is we always have hope. That makes sense. Check this out for a Phoenician building, all blocked up. Mud flooded, even down there, little Phoenician faces. But... Wow, the effort in that facade. Blank panels, lions, Bacchus, fruits flowing. Nice big portal. wonder why they put bars on that portal. No one's going to break in there. Not for security. It looks to be recently added though, because it's white mortar in here. See that a lot, you know, uh, railings in windows, but why is two stories up? All blocked off, every window blocked off. Whatever that was, it isn't anymore. So, more Phoenician world. I don't know where it is. Okay, let's have a look at this. Blocked, 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 blocked. All the bottom windows blocked. So what are you going to get with all of these structures? All add alterations. These are very nice. Look at them columns up there. God. Blank. Okay. Very, very nice. And a Greek urn. So, yeah, I went to the Lander of Cathedral, not last night, night before. Look at this from Mud Flood. <sighs> Paris. Demolition of batteries in Paris. That's the demolition of batteries. What kind of batteries are they, guys? They're like pillars all put together again, like batteries. Batteries! Demolition of batteries. Literally. What say you guys? What sayeth you? Is that what they mean? Or they mean in like a military, you know. This is not the days of the communards, is it? So it's eighteen sixties, not really look late looks later. Right, like they're smashing up something here. Don't see any armament, don't see any gun, don't see any concrete, any turret. You just see these strange things which are pillars put together, which is like a battery, like we just talked about. These are batteries, like literally. Huh. Wow. Oh. So look at these. Blank panel. Humongous stuff, a little people, statues removed. Laurel, the law, the law of L. Electric, maybe. Laurel. Wonder what that done. It's got a door, steel door. Going into where exactly? Oh yeah, of course the ship. Fashes behind for a huge pillar. Huge doors. Huge doors. Windows. Okay, let's have a look at this. Now this, uh, oh, I've seen this before. This uh, fellow who's loaded these on the think tank. Um, he's put some great plasma discharge event depictions in. So you can obviously get on there here yourself. Anybody's welcome to check this out. I will link it through my website now, where you can find it. And I want to thank everybody who takes part in this. Obviously, it's just you know really kind thing to be able to share. And um, we do attract good people here, which is a good thing. And everybody who's in this um, experience is a blessing to us all. 
I want to thank John Levy for writing me up a little preface for my book itch. I've asked UAP, he's going to do me one. So thanks you, brother. And Lee, flat earth British sub, who fucking killed it. It was brilliant. It was like, oh, you're so good. So yeah, um, did you know the original in this book that we was reading is um, Atlas in mythology is actually holding up the sky. And the Phoenicians have got him holding up a globe. So, part of the old expositions, they put up some strange huge ass stadium in 1887. And so, yeah, it's not good how they did that with Atlas, isn't it? Oh, yeah, and Atlas yields the ball up. Oh, does he? Is that a dragon in the water? Yeah, it's a huge dragon boat. So. A second, star footage. Let's start to some plasma resetty stuff here. Oh, so is this what they're plugging into them buildings? Could they be electric? Could it be another mode of transport? It'd be manary. The reverse engineered star forts. What's this? Oh, some giant star. I suppose it could be a firework. And this, whatever, straight lines. This is some technasmia science in itself. So, yeah, between civilizations, they need to terraform, so they're making huge amounts of steam, which is whiting up the sky, which is why you only see the sky white in all of the Victorian, so called Victorian images. I've seen this loads. You just move on a bit, guys. I want to stop on. Oh my god, that looks interesting. So, again, some sort of plasma re happening with this. And they're all people. It's all sort of our perspective, I suppose. So, Phoenicians carrying in their chariots, blowing their conical. Now, the conical was talked about, obviously, as well in this it was sinister when Sarconical blows and I like this I like this so different countries you get the dunces hat again plasma discharge event and they're going up a pole skull and crossbones everyone dead so they're safe are they laurel leaf a Roman and top of his pillar is just a spike so you've got active fasces literally holding an eagle wings open he's blowing air on him magnetics and his civilization is burning uh, crossed knives cross swords active charge flame on the head wings and a fleur de -lis. this guy it's French. He's not having got higher than most, but there's a, a active charge there too, and all of the winds blowing on him, the four angels, and that guy seems to have got there. He has his laurel leaf, and his fleur de lis, and he's shiny, and he won. Yeah, he won. Right, so that's an analogy for getting into power. Oh, look at these, these are beautiful. Mm. Nice HD. Sorry, I'm juggling through, but I'm going to show you these plasma discharge events. You've got this, you know, the dove with the plasma, the sound, and you've got a Pope in a backside setup because he's just like, it's one of them. They all are. Pupudi. Pupuki. Oh, I did see John Boy, he did wave. Pop John Bo Paul, he was alright. Well, he's not, you know, I don't know anything about it. I do. Wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. But, you know, he waved. He had a jolly face. Yeah. So, we got the Tartars, the Russians, and the French. And we have plasma discharge there, too. Mm, who knew? And the 
transport of old. This one's Phoenician. Full on. And a many headed Hydra. Who knows, guys, if this is reality. The Serpents is an allergy for electrical charge. Is this why St. Patrick chased. chased the snakes out of Ireland? The Hourglass. Cube, everything analogous for the place where we live. We're getting to know these symbols now. With the great unveiling, all our wings open, all our active charge. To reset the whole place. So, Aerostat. And the famous by now on Flight of British. Mirrors of the past, safeguarding our future, which I've shown many, many times, which is a reset depiction, which is hellish. It shows the old CNI, which I showed on my last vlog in a Phoenician booklet, and it's upside down, uh, which Lee Flat of British thinks and nates that we are upside down also under the great Italian ocean or the ocean above that we are upside down well we're breathing like liquid which is air and um, we don't feel like there were fish swimming in a soupy ocean do we but we in fact are we can't know frame of reference to know that we're not we are you know so you know great you know water and water and air very 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 close and it's pat of water in the air so like watery breathing creatures mostly anyway what's this hmm. so yeah thanks uh, whoever that is let's have a quick look um, who is donating the and his name is Tom Paul so big shout to Tom Paul thank you very very much your stuff is very 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 juicy another reset a picture so the Pope got like plasma discharge he's got plasma discharge too yeah that's a Spanish breed of horse Leo the Briton Britannicus taking up Napoleon with his broken sword fire breathing toads fire breathing serpents eh? though I walk through the valley, valley of the shadow of death I should fear no evil because I will have my staff beside me, which will zap your ass if you come too close. And this is Rome's, you know, after the events. The bridges are still smashed. Okay. Up until about, you know, 1900, they're all smashed. It's a bit of a flat earthy thing here. Ooh. Somebody riding a lobster. Rock, rock lobster. So, I don't actually like that because it's not actually sure. It's an armory, is it? Wow, look at that fascist type setup. No faceless knight. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Not to go far to find that. And post mud flood stairs going up to the giant doors. You need them that big because the people are this big. And there's a door that was there. Look at all this is. Looks like it's been water that's run down here and has washed this and has made it smooth. You find this on a lot of these buildings. You get a water line. Notice the same in Nottingham and other places. So, plasma discharge event from the controllers who are the Phoenicians setting things alight. There's that bloody Dunce's hat again. Mm. Ah, is this smell? And their nose are melting along again. It's not like Pinocchio, your, your nose grows long and you tell lies. And it'll help us have this bird with the wings open with the active charge because that's the analogy, the code for EM Tech in Antiquity. 
the hidden hands or the controllers which are either just out of our reality in another dimension or very much here with us but in another place so they could be you in a spiritual sense I think they have dark entities working in their favour they fuck with you flashes, flashes wow look at this building Oh, they are so into themselves with decoration, these Phoenicians. I mean, don't even inch, do they? So that, that'll be me anyway. So again, again, plasma discharge. Voltaire. And reset. Oh, let me just look at this last one. So yeah, you can um, view these at your own on a great flat of British think tank there's many many on you I need to find some time to add some myself I have quite a few so, well, thank you for a great week obviously peeps everyone's been very kind I gotta catch up though and caring so there's that prismatic thing going on or that excuse me where they reflect the light are they telling us it's an apparent sun or is this the aggregation the illumination of reason their reason their rules their tablets thou should not kill unless of course um, we tell you to in a war and then we'll say you're a hero we'll give you everything we'll say congratulations you've been very good human but it says on the ten commandments I'm not supposed to kill don't worry too much about that. Um, we've got a hang on that. We'll work it out for you, okay? So I won't be like eternally damnation then. No, 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 no. Shells egg. Shells. Have the Phoenicians. Phoenicians. So yeah, that's where we are so far, guys. I'm going to come back and I'm going to recap more plasma reset. Oh, that's mud flooded. Look at that still occupied so that's when they're actually using it for their bullshit the Phoenicians fighting dragons and gladiatorial purposes once it's no longer a, a water tower and it's smashed to shit yeah they're doing it then what's this? rope rope what would they be doing with all that rope in there? unless there's a dock at the back of it who knows Okay, you can check all these off yourself anyway, and don't go too quick. So, right, British, coming back. I've got a couple of picks there. Um, this is like I was talking about the Horn of Plenty in my last, but obviously you could buy one and wear it around your neck. So it's a Phoenician symbol. And something I'll be talking about next Saturday, okay, guys, is Elements of the Greatest Secret Never Told, which is the four angels and the electromagnetic properties of this place. It's dielectric universe if you want to call it. Did this place ever exist? I can't tell you. But it would be fun if it did. But it looks Phoenician. Sorry what we got here. It's an Indian red fort of Delhi and some beautiful big elephant thing pushed by 246. Maybe then in force 4, 8, 12, 16 for a back of sight to thing with a coffin on top. Napoleon's funeral 1840. You have photographs. Why didn't you say photographs? Just saying. So that is it. I've got plenty more photographs, but I've got to get on, guys. I need to recap. Now, I'm going to be only able to pop in to see you maybe once or twice if I'm lucky this week. But next week, I intend on cranking up life at the convention. Okay, we'll chat, we'll go and talk to people, and we'll grab them. Okay, is what we're going to do. So, thank you all. No. No. Don't go. Don't go. I'm finished. Um, my visit on uh, a couple of days ago. I went to Lanza Cathedral, which is just down the road, uh, with Manage, and had a visit. And it's pretty shit. Oh, I went to like the spooky cemetery and stuff. Oh, this is something I made on my photos last night. So we'll have a little summarise of the summer activities at Mud Flood Hunting. That's what we'll do.
that was God that long ago. Oh, time flies. This was um, last night, night before. There it was getting dark. We were at this, like, the home of the Welsh Anglican Church, and there's some crazy person inside playing the organ. So it was. Du -du -du, du -du 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 -du. So I didn't see him, but you can imagine that his hair was going all wild, and he was doing his, you know, he was getting his Amadeus on, you know. What about Bach? Bach is almost back aside, isn't it? Bach, back aside, yeah, it is. So um, they had Jesuit wallpaper ceiling in there. Couldn't really pick it up. Jesuit. Uh, it had the Jesuit symbol as well for an Anglican church. And devils on the building. And the best little spookiest graveyard. But we were losing the light of all graves. Can't see the date. Nice symbol though. Just like that plug. And the Celtic cross, which is the place where we live. And a really old church in the centre, a really old tree. We do like old trees. And no spectral phenomena. That's for Sophie Marriage looking at George and a dragon on a Welsh church. Now, all of this side was taken out in World War II in a mine attack. And this is the oldest part. And apparently, in here in 1850, there was a Roman temple. I've got a book about it in the house. I have vlogged about it, but in Flat Earth British Land and Cathedral, there's literally two three hours of this place look at the size of that window really low down the stairs going down there into the door there's a lot of mud I don't know what that is bit of footage <laughs> bit of footage footage Excuse me. Oh, sorry. And that's outside it. So. Yeah, that is sweet the sound. You, you can see, see the transition of the great ball. There's a dragon up there above it. Yeah. See that big fat dragon? Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice fat dragon. Sweet technology. Yeah. On the home of the Welsh Anglican Church, Clydeau Cathedral. Of the Bishop's steps, it looks like it's a little bit of mud, just off shore for some reason. It's a few years of plane, strange. I think it might be. So, the one tower, which has no steeple on it, was apparently built by Henry VIII's nephew. Casper, and apparently the top blew down in the storm of 1709, um, and he just built this rebuilt on top, and the other one spire is still in. Remember what we said? Cemeteries with one tower blown off, okay, have graves, and two towers seem to have none. They seem to be underneath these pillars. Oh, someone's possessed. I don't know. Probably shaking, shaking his head, head like, like most are. It's tripping ball. 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 It's tripping Pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. Nothing. And that strange door on that cathedral with the back of sight reeds across it. Amazing these. Look at them for uh, hinges. There it is, home of the Anglican, Welsh Anglican Church, Llandaff. Cathedral, loads of things missing, loads of things blocked up, loads of changes. Look at these windows here. What do you think they were for? Shooting arrows, letting light in, having a look out. It's weird, isn't it? It's almost two separate churches. It's grey, it's block. It's completely different to this. Hmm. 
I've got the history. I've got a book from 1932. I literally lent it to the people in here. They wanted to know the face of a dead saint who was in there or something, and I had it. So they um, basically took photographs of it. Just a handle. Oh, very strange handle. Yeah, in front of this church is a big hill called the Bishop Steps. Usual. And a bit of wallage, two separate wallage, and they've used stones facing down. It's really old hard concrete. Can't tell you how old that is. There it is. Just before the sun goes down. Really, really atmospheric with the keyboard going at the same time. And it's a sword with a flame. So it's electromagnetic. Yeah, look like fashies. I saw the lights catching it. Okay, guys, that's me. And this was all taken out in World War II. 1941 Cardiff Blitz. A pilot dropped a mine. And it floated down. And took off the side of the cathedral, which was rebuilt by the famous architect Epstein. This was apparently a giant tower, which was outside. And that's the remnants. So, it is really wide. It must have been like a 100 foot high tower. What could that have been for? It's me. Oh, sorry. I'm not sure if uh, I want that one off. Anyway, that's me. I'm going. I am going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I gotta get on. So, guys, are you gonna be back in a week? A flight of British book. A flight of British con at the convention. All coming this week. Globe light tour. Loads to look forward to. Very exciting times. And another piece for the puzzle. Do you think the reason an electric comes from? the ground um, and goes up rather than the other way around is because of the large amounts of piezoelectric human bones from previous resets which are all in layers of mud or directly below our feet. What about technasmia? Do you think technasmia has a, a practical application as in plugins for some sort of aerial vehicle or who knows on the sides. Maybe they're just big trunking coming out of them to power who knows what. This was the golden era. We know little about. We know the buildings that are left over. They were so much more. We haven't worked out exactly what's going on. We know technology. Yeah, there's more. There's more. The whole place is dielectric. You know this guys and we are Taurus fields. It all works on microcosms. Microcosms of how this place works. That's how we work it out. Reverse engineer antiquity. So yeah. Shouts, anybody wants any birthday shouts, contact me for my next vlog coming up. Um, and that's all we're doing. Remember, hope has got a hand. So this is epic. Okay. Excited about that? Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? And um, Ranty, thank you for having me on your channel and talk about my book and my subjects. Okay, so that's really kind of you. So make sure to subscribe. Please share this out. Okay, because don't share. They won't. I mean. Um, and whatever other YouTube things that they do. Okay, I will see you in a week. i got to get on. I've got lots to do. Peace and love. Be good. Okay, if you're not, I will hear all about it. <laughs> okay, one love.